Welcome everyone to Cilium eBPF Day North America. This is the fourth time we've doing this event. I'm really excited for the great schedule that we put together for you today. But before we can go to the really exciting talks, um, I have a couple quick announcements from the Cilium and eBPF communities. So the first one, um, thank you to our Diamond sponsor. This wouldn't be possible today uh, without Isovalent. Um, go check them out outside. Uh, they're making, helping make this event possible. Uh, the second one is code of conduct, very important. We want this to be a safe space. If you have any problems, uh, check this out or come talk to me. Uh, we want everyone to feel comfortable here. And the first one, Cilium is now at 20K GitHub stars. I think that's a pretty big milestone for the project. I think besides just the number, um, one of the coolest things about this graph is that it's actually getting steeper. And I think this is what's really exciting me about the Cilium project, is as the project is pr approaching almost 10 years old, the excitement around it is not dying down, it's only accelerating. And I think that's why so many people are in this room today, and it's make why I'm really excited for the future of the project, too. Uh, the second one, yesterday we had the second Cilium Developer Summit. We had a lot of participants from around the community talking about where the project should go in the next decade, um, and I'm really looking forward to all the outcomes out of that. So thanks for everyone that came, and thanks for Google for hosting. Cilium is doing a lot of things around KubeCon. There's going to be 22 talks. There's going to be a project kiosk, which you can find me at most of the time, and there's a maintainer's track session, lots of ways to get involved in the project. So if today gets you excited, there's lots more great content to come across the conference. The Cilium 1.6 release recently came out. Uh, here's a couple of the things I'm most excited about. NetKit, where container networking is as fast as host networking, multicast support, gateway API 1.1, port ranges, um, and lots of other things. Come to the maintainer track session if you want to dive into all of these a little bit more. Cilium has 12 new case studies from the CNCF uh, just since last KubeCon. I think this really speaks to the momentum around the project that all these companies have come forward and said, yes, we're using Cilium, we're using it in production, it's solving our business use cases, and it's helping us make a better business. So if you are considering using Cilium, I'd check out some of these case studies um, or come to my talk where I'll be diving into some of these on Thursday. Cilium has a certification, so if you want to show your knowledge and experience around uh, Cilium to your employer, future employer, or just the ecosystem as a whole, go check out the Cilium Certified Associate. Um, it's a great way to show your knowledge about the project. Right now, we do, currently do have a user survey out. We'd love to hear from you and the community. Help us make the project, uh, improve the project, and find out what's happening. Uh, the link to it is iso go to slash Cilium 2024. Uh, this is a great way to provide feedback to the maintainers. I know we get to talk to everybody in the halls of KubeCon today, um, but this is another great way to provide feedback to the project. So that's on the Cilium side. On the eBPF side, uh, if you were in Chicago last year, we launched the eBPF documentary. This now has 100,000 views on YouTube. It's an awesome Netflix-style adventure into how eBPF came to be and what it's done in the last decade. If you haven't seen it yet, I really recommend checking it out. Um, it's one of the, my favorite projects that I worked in the past year. Uh, eBPF is actually now becoming a standard under the IETF, uh, which is pretty exciting. I think this will allow us to be a lot more compatible across platforms, across vendors. I think it's a really big step forwards for the project, uh, making it a consistent way to deploy and use eBPF wherever you want to be. We have a couple big announcements from the eBPF Foundation, too. So the first one is the eBPF verifier, uh, kind of the crucial piece of the technology uh, protecting the safety um, of the kernel. It underwent an independent third-party audit from the NCC group. Um, if you want to find it, uh, you can go on GitHub, eBPF Foundation slash publications. And you'll be, be able to find it there. I think this really speaks to it um, of what the eBPF kind of has done as a community. Over the past decade, a large amount of security vulnerability research has been carried out into the verifier, and many bugs have been identified and fixed by the community. And so they did find one CVE. It's been fixed by the community now. And I think this is a really great testament to like, the security and safety of deploying eBPF into production. So another thing uh, kind of going forward, so yes, eBPF is a great technology to use, and it's a safe technology to use, and it's a secu secure te technology to use. 
On top of the eBPF verifier audit, uh, the eBPF Foundation also did a threat model. Um, and this kind of gives you, if you're thinking about deploying into your uh, eBPF into your uh, uh, production systems, uh, and your CISO comes to you, is this a safe technology? This is a great report to hand to them. It really speaks to um, how you should think about eBPF security when you're deploying it. Um, and I think there's a couple great quotes from here uh, that from the great folks at Control Plane. So eBPF increases security over traditional approaches due to the rigorous validation of user-supplied code. So that's the eBPF verifier that we just audited that I was just talking about. Um, the threat model kind of goes a little bit further, and it kind of provides you a way to think about the security of it. Um, and it does that through things like attack trees, uh, talking about the additional security controls that eBPF has built into it to help protect your system, and really shows that you know, eBPF abilities make it more precise in operations. And this is really the benefit over you know, changing kernel code or adding kernel modules, because it makes it easier to eliminate the risks associated with privileged processes. So if you want to modify the kernel, eBPF is a great way to do that. So another great report from the eBPF Foundation to check out. eBPF Foundation also sponsored $25,000 uh, to academic research to advance the state of the art for the eBPF ecosystem. Lots of really interesting projects, and I'm excited to see what they find out uh, in the next year. And finally, eBPF is going to be at FOSTEM, first time at a dev room. The CFP is open. I'd highly encourage you to submit there if you have a cool use case of eBPF, um, or find me also on stage there. Uh, finally, just a few housekeeping things. There's going to be captioning and translation for all the sessions, too. Uh, check this out if you want to have that. Uh, the reflections and meals are going to be in the Salt Palace Hall C level one. Um, and there's going to be tea, coffee, water outside, too. Uh, at the end of today, uh, if you want to talk to some of the speakers or anybody else here, uh, join us for the event reception from 5.30 to 7 in the lower concourse. And finally, the events for next year, 2025, CNCF uh, hosted co-located events for London. Um, are, the CFP for those are open, and they're, and they're closing Wednesday, December 4th. So with that, final thank you to our Diamond sponsor with Isovalent, and I won't hold you back from all of the presentations that are going to be happening today. Thank you.